Hi guys, it's Kat. Today I'm going to show you how to build this gorgeous 1 to 12 scale miniature upright piano. Thanks to everyone who requested this video because I had a lot of fun making it. Let's get started. The first thing I do is grab a sheet of craft plywood. This is only 1 8 of an inch thick so I can cut it with just my X-Acto knife. Draw a 4 and 3 fourths inch by 4 inch rectangle. Then cut in the lines you drew on both sides and snap the wood off. This will be the front of the piano. Make two of these. These two pieces will be the front and back of the piano. Then cut out two 4 inch by 1 inch pieces using that same method. These two rectangles will form the sides of the piano. For the bottom, we need a 3 fourths inch by 4 and 3 fourths inch thin rectangle. So in summary, we have the front and back pieces, the side pieces, and the bottom. Let's assemble them. Simply add wood glue to the bottom edge of the back piece and position it at a 90 degree angle to the bottom piece. Do the same for the front piece. Now just glue on the sides. As usual, I just use regular Elmer's wood glue. This looks good for now. We'll add on a top piece later. Now let's get to the fun part of making the piano keyboard. Cut out a 5 inch by 1 inch thin rectangle and glue it to the front piece 2 inches away from the bottom. This is what the keyboard will actually sit on. Let's make the sides of this keyboard area next. I take a jumbo popsicle stick and because it's thin, I double it up. Simply apply wood glue and add on another popsicle stick. You can also just use more plywood here if you don't have these popsicle sticks. Once that's dry, I cut out a 1 inch piece. I just use a miter handsaw here to get a nice straight cut. This gives us a 3 fourths inch by 1 inch rectangle. Draw a straight line down the middle of the long side and split that piece in half. Use a file to round out one corner. Do this to both pieces. Then glue each piece to either side of the keyboard. Next, I grab a quarter inch square dowel. Cut out a 4 and 3 fourths inch length. Make two of these. Glue one to the back of the keyboard area. Add a second one right on top of it. Then take a craft matchstick. They're like super tiny square dowels. Cut out two 5 eighths of an inch pieces. Glue these to both sides of the inside keyboard area. It looks good. Let's put this whole thing aside for now and make the actual keys. For the keys, I use some white polymer clay. This stuff takes some work to get it soft, so be patient. Once it's soft, roll out a tube. Place two pieces of plywood on either side and roll the clay out. The wood will ensure that the whole piece is rolled out evenly. You can use anything to roll this clay out. I just use this can. Then cut off the ends with a flat knife. You want the length of this keyboard to be 4.5 inches long. Then take your knife and make indentations in the clay every 1 tenth of an inch. They don't need to be super deep, but you want to make sure they're clearly visible. Then use a ruler to help make a clean straight cut along the long sides. The keys should be exactly half an inch. Therefore, the complete size of this polymer clay rectangle is half an inch by 4.5 inches. Remove the excess clay. Then use a knife to add key details to the thin side of the keyboard. This will add really nice detail when you're viewing the piano from the front. Bake this clay for about 10 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. While that's baking, let's make the black keys. Draw on some black polymer clay. Here I use popsicle sticks on the sides of clay so I get a thinner piece. Cut off the long side so you get 3 eighths of an inch in width. Then cut out a ton of 1 tenth of an inch pieces. Pre-bake them for about 5 minutes. Once they've cooled down, break off the individual keys. To attach the black keys to the white ones, I'm using some liquid polymer clay. I just add a drop to the back of each black key and place it on the keyboard lines we created. Make groups of 2 and 3 alternating between each group. Once you've placed all the pieces on, bake the entire keyboard again for 5-10 to 10 minutes to harden the liquid clay. To add some gloss, I'll be using some diamond glaze. I just use a paintbrush to apply it. Look how much better these keys look with a coat of gloss. Look, I made a tiny pendant using these same exact steps. Okay, back to the piano. Add some glue to the keyboard area of the piano and attach the keys. Then grab a wooden coffee stirrer and cut out a 5 inch length. Glue it to the front of the keyboard base. Cut out another one that's 4 and 3 fourths inch long and glue it to the front of the keys. This just gives the area a cleaner look. For the keyboard lid, cut out a rectangle that's 4 and 3 fourths inch by 5 eighths of an inch. This piece should fit snugly into place above the keys. Then grab some miniature hinges. The link to the ones I'm using here is listed in the description box below. I just add a drop of super glue to the back of the hinges and attach them to the piano. Now your piano can open and close. 
To finish the lid, I cut out a 4 and 3 fourths inch of coffee stirrer and glue it to the front edge of the lid. Now you have a really snug closure. Next, let's build the legs of the piano. I cut out two 1 inch lengths from more quarter inch square dowels. Glue one to each side of the piano base. Then grab a quarter inch round dowel. Use a miter saw to cut out two 1 and 3 fourths inch lengths. File one end until you get a nice taper. Do this to both legs. Add wood glue and position them in place. We're almost there guys. To close the top of the piano, cut out a 5 and a quarter by 1 and a quarter inch rectangle. Round out one of the longer sides. Then glue it to the top of the piano. This next part is optional, but I'm going to add some trim detail. Cut out two 5 inch lengths of coffee stirrer and glue them to the front of the piano. This will frame out this area. Add two more 1 and a quarter inch pieces to finish the frame. Do the same for the bottom. For the foot pedals, I grab a coffee stirrer with rounded ends. Break it in half and cut off the round ends at the half inch mark. Draw a straight line halfway down and curve it out to one side. Cut off the excess. Use a file to smooth out any rough edges. Do this for both foot pedals and glue them to the piano using some wood glue. Make sure the position on the trim detail. Okay, final detail here. I just cut out a 2 inch length from another coffee stirrer and glue it to the inside of the lid. Now we're all finished with the build. Let's get to the fun part of painting it. I'll be painting this piano a nice classic black. Add black acrylic paint to all the bare wood areas. Use masking tape around the keyboard area for a clean paint job. About two coats should be enough to cover the wood completely. You can leave the hinges as is, but I find them to be a bit too big. So I use some black nail polish to camouflage most of it. I use nail polish because acrylic paint does not stick well to metal. Paint it for petals with metallic gold acrylic paint. This looks pretty good already, but as usual, I'm going to add on a few coats of polyacrylic for a nice glossy look. As you can see, this varnish picks up the grain texture from the wood, so several coats are definitely necessary. To help ensure you get a smooth finish, use some high grit sandpaper between coats of poly. I could sand and add a few more coats here, but I'm pretty satisfied with the finish. And that's it guys, the miniature piano is all done. This will look great in any dollhouse setting or as a gift to a music lover in your life. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye.